welcome to this, and yes, another Ring of Honor review, though this is a pay-per-view review, and the fourth show that I've watched, even though this is only the third show that I have reviewed, under the Adam Pearce era, um, and I must say that so far I am enjoying the Adam Pearce era. Uh, the booking has been good, even though a lot of people have complained and said that, you know, it's too sports entertainment. I don't think it is. I think it's just good, basic storytelling booking, which is one thing a lot of people complained Ring of Honor um, needed more of, so there is that. The pacing of the shows have been much better. I don't feel like wore out, or I don't feel like I need to stop when in the middle of a DVD, because I'm just too, it's, it's just too draining to watch the pay-per-view or the DVD, so that is good as well. Um, the only show that I would say is, was a disappointment was the Dayton show before this, Escalation, which, um, yeah, other than the Tyler Black, uh, Snow Joe show, and I will, or match, which was actually taped for this show and was put on the Dayton show because the Dayton show got so bad reviews um, live that I'm sure they stuck it on there just to try to sell that DVD. Um, instead of sending it on this, which people were going to have to wait for, and yeah, I'm sure there's various reasons that they would give why they stuck it on there, but uh, they did stick it on there, so uh, that's pretty much the only reason if you were to get that would be see uh, Tyler Black and Smojo, which was a awesome match, I will say that. But, let's get on with this pay-per-view. This was, amazingly, a great pay-per-view. Not so amazingly, because Ring of Honor, it's more amazing when Ring of Honor doesn't put on a great pay-per-view, in my opinion. Um, this was really good stuff, particularly for two hours, and particularly for, I paid $10, I know some people will pay $15 for this. Uh, good stuff. This pay-per-view, <coughs> of course, is the first one for DirecTV. So more people will be able to watch this pay-per-view than in the past. So I would recommend that if you are capable to watch this pay-per-view, this was very good. It has, in my opinion, a absolutely <coughs> fantastic main event that must be seen um, if you love professional wrestling. But let's get started with the show. We started the show off with a bit of a surprise. Uh, J. Mark Briscoe versus Kevin Steen and El Generico for the tag team titles. Um, this was set up at the uh, one of the, the last Canadian show where uh, Kevin Steen and El Generico beat Jay and Mark Briscoe. And Jay and Mark Briscoe at the end of that show were not happy that they lost. And so they came out, challenged Kevin Steen and El Generico uh, to a tag team match. Uh, they came out, said, you know, Mark was hurt, uh, was noticeably hurt. You could tell he was hurt, his knee was hurt. And they said that they didn't want to take on the Briscoes at 50%. They respected them, particularly after the brutal matches they had had the year before, and that it was just, it, they didn't want to take on the Briscoes unless they were 100%. Um, the Briscoes then attacked, and so we had a match. Um, this didn't go long, which, which when the match happened, did a lot of people complained about, but if you watch the match, it actually makes sense, because Mark is hurt, and you can tell Mark's hurt. They sell the injury, um, they continually talk about the injury, the whole thing, um, but this was still a pretty good match, I must say, for as short as it was, um, it was definitely was not, you know, up to their level of, but it definitely continues that feud that we saw between them uh, before, and you could definitely, even at the end of the match, you could tell that they're probably going to continue this at another time, which is good in my opinion, um, and uh, particularly with the Briscoes chasing, though I think the Briscoes are better as champions than being chased, but that's just me, but uh, still, pretty good opener, and uh, was very enjoyable. Um, next, we got Mischief versus Sarah Del Rey in a shimmer match that got time on a pay-per-view. Wow. Imagine that, a ROH pay-per-view where the women actually got time. And it was okay. Um, probably not as good as it could have been. I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that the fans weren't really into it as much. Uh, though, you know, Sarah Del Rey and Mischief were pretty well together. And Sarah Del Rey knows she can pretty much just bend Mischief in any type of position that she needs to, which is pretty cool, so you get some pretty good wrestling spots out of that. Uh, though, it would have been nice if they would have built this up a little bit better, particularly if Mischief had been on some of the other pay-per-views, so that this would seem a little bit more important, but they didn't. But hopefully, Adam does continue to book the women in longer matches, so that hopefully we can have at least one company out there that is on some sort of television that actually gives the women time, and, you know, since the knockouts are now nothing more than the divas, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, we can get some better matches out of it. But this was probably one of the better women's matches I've seen in a long time. So, well, I shouldn't say a long time, but probably eh, for at least the last six months or so, probably, maybe. Um, next, we had Claudio Castanoli, Silas Young, 
Alex Payne and Sammy Callahan in a four-corner survival match. This is my only big gripe about this pay-per-view, is I don't know why you would put Silas Young, Silas Young Alex Payne, and Sammy Callahan on in this match, on the pay-per-view, even though this was kind of a squash. I think you could have used some of the other, you know, lesser guys um, on the roster, unless you just couldn't bring them in for this show, but then that's something else. But that was my only big gripe, even though they did do a pretty good booking job with this. Because <coughs> after Claudio pretty much killed everybody, um, he looked like he was going to attack Alex Payne with a chair. Brian Danielson, who, of course, Claudio Castanelli has been feuding with, came out, saved Alex Payne, which would be important later in the show. Um, next, we have Brent Albright, uh, Roderick Strong, and the returning Ace Steel taking on Davy Richards, Go Shiyazaki, and Chris Hero. Uh, this was a good six-man tag match. I really enjoyed this. Um, I like pretty much all the guys in this. It was nice to see Ace Steel back. Um, this was in Chicago. That is his hometown. This was pretty much right after he'd been released by uh, the WWE. So um, <clears throat> that was kind of cool. Lots of good stuff. This was just a continuization of the Brent Albright, Roderick Strong feud with uh, Sweet and Sour Inc., um, kind of setting up the Steel Cage uh, Warfare match, which we will get on the next pay-per-view. Yay for that. I will do a video on that and other things, War Games type things related, because I know a lot of people want to see War Games brought back, and I have a video I want to do about that. But this was a good match, so definitely some fun. And then we got into the awesomeness that was this pay-per-view, which started with Jimmy Jacobs and Austin Aries in an I Quit match. This was freaking great. Both guys just beat the hell out of each other. Uh, Austin Aries took a bump through a table with Jimmy Jacobs, which I don't know how Austin Aries didn't break his arm. Um, the ending was brutal. Everything about this match was brutal. And it was the return of Lacey, who came back. Now, originally when this was taped, um, it sounded more like you know, she came back and it was more like a plan by Austin Aries <coughs> to bring back Lacey. But while watching the paper, you... That was not the case. Lacey came back, and we don't know why Lacey came back. Did she come back to see Jimmy get killed? Did she come back for other reasons? We don't know. That actually added a lot to this match, in my opinion, because I do kind of think they might bring Lacey back at least one more time um, to to tie up some loose ends, if you will. But uh, this was very good, very bloody. Um, what you would expect between these guys. Uh, the ending sequence was nasty. The way this this ended was just nasty and kind of unreal, but uh, very, just a great, great match. Um, there you go. Then we had the main event, which was all sorts of awesomeness. Nigel McGinnis versus Brian Danielson. Um, they, this, in my opinion, this was my favorite match out of every match they've had, and that's saying a lot. I think everyone's always going to have their favorite, but this is my favorite. Um, this was really good. They went for a long time, uh, did a lot of good mat wrestling, did a lot of good counter wrestling. Um, there was a lot of things we had not seen them do before, which was kind of cool. This way, you know, they could have just went out there and done a lot of the matches they'd done before. Um, that was not necessarily the case. Uh, they, they definitely, they, Nigel worked over uh, Brian's leg through almost this entire match, which was really cool. Um, at one point, they did go outside, and if you don't know, Ring of has a 20 count on the outside. And uh, Nigel was going to use a chair. The ref stopped him, dragged him back into the ring, and then started the 20 count on Brian, but, but while his back was turned, Claudio came out and attacked Brian Danielson, which then after Claudio left, Alex Payne came back after Brian had saved him, and he dragged him back into the uh, ring, uh, pushed him in the ring right to beat the 20 count, <coughs> which got a really good pop and made people really think, wow, he's going to win this. He's going to didn't, of course, but uh, very good match, uh, back and forth action, lots of just cool stuff, lots of good mat wrestling. I was really surprised we didn't get a, uh, a big, loud, long This Is Wrestling chant for this match. This was awesome stuff, and uh, awesome pay-per-view. Um, 8.75, I really like this. Felt it flowed a lot better than a lot of other Ring of Honor pay-per-views, and the production values. Yes, this was the pay-per-view where we got the enhanced production values. They're not WWE level, they're not TNA level, they're more of, I would say, ECW level when ECW is on TNN. Um, it's a little, maybe a little bit better than that. But, there was overhead crane shots, and there was a lot of them, and they worked great. And, uh, you know, the, these all were, this was taped, but the reports are that 
pretty much they taped and edited it all in the same night that they did the pay-per-view, the production company that they brought in to do this pay-per-view. So big ups to them. They did a really good job, uh, particularly with the overhead shots. There was some just nice overhead shots, which I've never seen the WWE do, and I very seldom have seen TNA do, which was really cool. Added some added some coolness, uh, some nice cool uh, spots. Added some coolness to some of the cool spots that maybe we hadn't seen before, some different angles, was was really good. Uh, the guys did a really good job. I don't know if these guys had ever done pro wrestling before, but I will say this, and this is not a slam against TNA. This is just a slam against the guy that does their direction. Uh, these guys did a better job than the guy that does TNA. I don't know what his name is, but I know he's been doing it for 15 years because he was doing it for WCW too, apparently. And they did a better job, even on a, you know, I mean, this was, if this was taped that night, okay, and edited that night, then they pretty much they're doing the same thing that the Impacts do, and this this just flowed a lot better and was edited better than a lot of the Impacts. So um, definitely worth checking out. If, you know, the production values have kind of turned you off of Ring of before, I would say check, check it out. Um, it was really good. Uh, the wrestling, as always, was excellent. Uh, definitely just, if you have access to this, show definitely check it out I, I think you'll enjoy it and uh that is it um like i said very good uh this was of course the fourth uh as i said uh adam pierce show that i have seen and um overall i you know i think he's doing a pretty good job so far that i've seen i haven't seen everything yet uh when i see more than like to make a much better judgment but so far i've liked what i've seen so uh there is to that definitely uh check out the pay-per-view if you can um, I think you'll enjoy it, and uh, I'm out later.